I and others, I myself from Egypt, yeah. uh, witnessing our revolution now, um, I as well as others who are pursuing the same destiny of creating change, <laughs> would like to get your expertise uh, on the change that you envisioned and then you implemented in Romania. I, I became Prime Minister directly from the barricade. Uh, previously, uh, previous to that, I, uh, I, I was not involved in politics and even I hated politics. <laughs> I never imagined that I could join politics. I, I really, I was very passionate with my, with my uh, profession as a professor and a scientist. Um, and uh, very happy to do that. Of course, I was very unhappy, unhappy about the fate of my country, about uh, the uh, uh, tougher and tougher and at the end the toughest dictatorship among the communist countries. And uh, above all, the lack of freedom. And I think this is precisely uh, the feelings of those who uh, started and uh, and fought during uh, the uh, Egyptian revolution. The same uh, spirit, the same feeling that they have to conquer by themselves their freedom. But after that comes uh, the huge task. The huge, the huge task, the huge uh, uh, challenges are related to how to manage the, the, those uh, um, first moments of the transition because you have all the structures of the former dictatorship in place. Of course their credibility is, uh, is in shambles, is ruined, but they are there. Uh, they have um, a lot of um, tools still in their power uh, to influence uh, the society. They have their capacity to communicate uh, a capacity of, of, I would say, to manipulate the public opinion. Even after the top. Absolutely. Uh, you have to imagine that many people under the dictatorship were tainted by, uh, by the secret service, by the police. Uh, they uh, were forced, or not, but maybe they were forced to collaborate with the former dictatorship. And they are so somehow they are still uh, under the um, some kind of uh, influence, domination of those uh, structures. Uh, in, in Romania, maybe like in Egypt, uh, one of the most uh, sensitive issues was the fate of the army, because the army was, in a very similar way, responsible for the killings uh, in in Romania uh, uh, following the orders of Ceausescu of the dictatorship and then on the 22nd of December they were the army was uh, uh, crucial in order to say the revolution is uh, victorious <coughs> they uh, suddenly in the morning said we uh, join the people and we want to be with the people. That's why it's what? Quick and fast. <laughs> so uh, you have uh, the fate of, uh, in fact, you s when you say the fate of institutions, you are thinking of people, a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of, of, of people uh, involved in the former institutions. You need to be extremely attentive to all these things. The rush towards some kind of revenge could jeopardize uh, the process of democratization itself. Then uh, you have, um, uh, you, you are confronted with uh, the need to, uh, to make um, the people feel that they, uh, after they, are, they conquered the freedom, to feel that they are the agents of the change. Uh, and, and in this uh, during this uh, period when uh, everything has to change, uh, the, um, there is a, uh, an unavoidable confrontation between those who want a complete change and those who represent the past. They are still there. This gradual change. You need to be very uh, careful 
not in the sense of uh, protecting uh, that or that people or, or that institution, but uh, protecting the revolution itself from uh, the fears, from the disruptions, uh, from the attacks which, uh, which could uh, occur. My, I, I knew very much, uh, I, I knew very well that uh, be, through my experience as a professor, and I worked a lot uh, with the industry, that there were people of great uh, capacity, great competence, who were not uh, politicians, who were there precisely to, uh, to run properly the knowledge. Their, their, their field. So in a matter of hours, because it was a matter of urgency, I had to, I had to, to have my, my cabinet form as quickly as possible. I mean, the country should know that there is a government yes. and there is a ministry for that and that, and that uh, sector. And taking action as well. So I put in place uh, very good people, generally very good people. Very good people. Did uh, you have any resistance from these uh, chosen people to accept? No, zero. I would say... Uh, 90% of those uh, I elected then were uh, delivered exactly what I wanted. Of course, uh, the first thing they uh, asked me when I, I called them, I said, from, uh, uh, from now on, now on you have one hour to go there and, uh, and to, I, I'm not going with you, you should go by yourself and tell them you are, the I'm the new minister. You, I'm appointed by the prime minister and if they have a, if they have any uh, any problem, they call me. But I have no time. No, there I, I have no possibility to to go with you. But they asked me, well, what what I have to do now as a minister? What's uh, I said? Look, it's it's quite simple. As a professional, you know that under the previous regime, you worked under very uh, heavy and sometimes absurd restrictions, or impositions, political impositions, well, they are not anymore. You are free to do what you know the best to do and in the best way you can. That's Before all. Your Excellency, you are the one responsible. As full responsibility means yours, not theirs. Yes. So did you trust that they would deliver? They, they simply followed. I, 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 I mean, the need, for, the need for leadership was so great that the men who, uh, who took this uh, responsibility of being a leader is the leader in, in uh, you, you understand yes but i mean at the end i understood i understood that that time is time is running fast the country needs to be uh, comforted that the life is going to be nicer but it's going on yes. it's functioning the yes. things are properly functioning you feed the, your children uh, the hospitals uh, deliver health care, uh, the schools deliver education, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and the industry is, and the agriculture is producing what they can produce. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. So, um, um, if you ask me uh, how I became a leader, it's because the, the context, the, the moment, uh, put me in this position. I mean, that was the urgent need. I was there and I fulfilled that need. That, that's all. <laughs> Final words now. And I guess this is for countries like mine, uh, countries like Libya now on the road, maybe a couple of days or weeks, God knows, Yemen, Syria. Who knows? And God knows even will this expand over outside the Middle East or not. But what your uh, your recommendations to expedite the process of stability after revolution. Right. What's the lessons that you would like to share with these? Uh, with there, are, there are. Well, you are already not just at the beginning of the process. Now, I'm talking about the concepts. Of but um, of managing revolutions. Managing but there, there are three, uh, three crucial aspects mm -hmm. of, uh, of the. Uh, starting period of the uh, of this uh, emerging uh, process mm -hmm. first uh, it's very much needed to 
somehow to improve the, the life of the people. It's always possible to do that. And uh, it's not necessarily with a lot of money we do that. The second important aspect was to uh, somehow to organize a political body. In my country, we organized the so-called provisional parliament with no legitimacy. Still, we included everybody there and the debate started. It was official broadcast, debate. official debate. Mm -hmm. It was broadcasted live <laughs> by the, on TV. It was very interesting. The, the, the sense of responsibility of the people there was huge, incredibly, incredibly high and, 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 and positive. They felt that they were really building a new they, society. You got them engaged. It's, uh, it was uh, very, very important that the heat, to diffuse the heat, the tension of the society within this body. And thirdly, it was very important to, to somehow to uh, uh, send a, a proper message to the military institutions that, yes, maybe they could serve democracy. They can change and serve democracy. Those responsible for the killings will be judged on individually, not as a military body. Somebody who really abused the law, who perpetrated uh, actions of, uh, of repression, of uh, torture or something, which was, according to the, the law, the communist law, was, was not allowed. So they will be individually responsible. But as a body, those military institutions, we want to, we, we seek simply that the change is in the sense of them serving democracy and of course uh, they should not by any any means they should not be involved in the political power within the political power they stay out of the political process and they accepted that i appreciate it thank you very much your excellency to you and uh, I look forward to see you again. See you in Cairo. In Cairo soon. <laughs> Thank not? you very much.